This is IndyCar, a racing series I don't really know much about. I'm a lifelong F1 fan. I like Formula E. I watch the occasional NASCAR race. But IndyCar is just something I've seemed to ignore my entire life. So I thought today, why not find out everything I need to know to tune in and watch the series this season. And in the process, I can make this video for you lot so that you can try and do the same. Now, I'll be honest, I did have some help with this. Big shout out to Cassie at Mama GeForce on Twitter. She made a mega beginner's guide on there. So I reached out to her, asked if I could play Drys at all. She said yes. And now here I am saving you all from having to read and read having it all in a lot less detail. Because who better to tell you about this fantastic racing series than someone who's never really watched it. <laughs> anyway, let's learn together and get going. IndyCar is an American-based racing series which sees open-wheeled race cars battle it out over 17 rounds on a wide variety of circuits. Now, I know a lot of you may be thinking, wide variety? I swear they only race on oval circuits. Well, that's what I thought. But apparently we're all stupid because that's not true at all. There are four different kind of tracks that IndyCar race on. We have street circuits that are temporarily built for the race weekend like an F1. Road courses, which are actual permanent race tracks, short and intermediate ovals, which you know are the tracks where they only turn left, and finally super speedways. They're pretty much the same as the normal ovals, except they're a lot bigger, a lot faster, and you don't really touch the brake pedal unless you're trying to avoid a big crash. <laughs> now, surprisingly, most indie races take place on road courses, with there being seven races on those kind of tracks this season, with the other ten split evenly between oval courses and street circuits, which now unfortunately means I'm gonna have to rewrite all my jokes by them only turning left, which has really left me in a bad mood. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, the cars themselves, what are they? Are they just like F1? Are they electric like Formula E? Can you race them in a Red Bull soapbox event? Well, the current chassis used by all the teams is the Dallara IR12, also known as the DW12, named after the late Dan Weldon. It has a top speed of 240 miles per hour and no power steering, which basically means to turn the wheel, you're going to have to be wham like me. Look at the size of those muscles. Now, on paper, IndyCar is a spec series, meaning that in theory, all the cars are the same. However, despite the major components of the car that the chassis tires and aero kit being the same for everyone, there are still a load of areas in which the teams can develop and innovate in to try and get ahead of their rivals. They also have unlimited wind tunnel time, so you can already see how similar to F1, the teams with bigger budgets and thus bigger facilities can get ahead. So despite it being a spec series in theory, there still are, you know, the better teams and, well, the poorer teams. Speaking of the teams, let's get into them, shall we? Now, similarly to Formula 1, there is 10 teams on the grid. However, unlike F1, they don't all have two cars each, with some having four and some having three. You can even just have one if you like, although none this year just have one. These 10 teams are evenly split between two different engine manufacturers, those being Honda and Chevy. Now, I'm not going to go in depth here about all the teams and every single driver because we'll be here forever, and frankly, I don't really know enough. So instead, I'm going to try and recap them all quite briefly, but, you know, still give you the information you need to know. First up, Andretti Autosport, one of the big three teams in IndyCar. These lot have a load of resources. They've had a load of success in the past. Drivers include Colton Herter, who, if you remember, was trying to get into F1 last year, but they wouldn't let him. And our old friend, Roman Grosjean. There's Chip Ganassi, also a part of the big Free, a historic team with loads of championships. Drivers include Marcus Ericsson, Scott Dixon, Alex Pelot, and XF2 driver Marcus Armstrong, who's actually sharing the number 11 car this year with Takuma Sato. And by sharing, I don't mean they're both going to squeeze into the cockpit at the same time. Sato's just doing the oval races, and Armstrong's doing all the others. Because in IndyCar, you don't need the same driver for every race, lads. Penske round out the big three in IndyCar, and they're pretty much considered the gold standard in terms of IndyCar success. They're the current champions, and last year won over half the races between their three drivers, Joseph Newgarden, Scott McLaughlin, and Will Power who took the title. Another top team knocking on the door of the big three are Arrow McLaren. One of the most well-funded teams on the grid. They have been improving exponentially over the last few seasons. And despite not having won a single championship or an Indy 500, they're really getting themselves up there now as one of the top dogs. Or at least some of the top contenders anyway. They've expanded their team to three drivers this season, including O'Ward, who did some testing in the McLaren F1 car, as well as Rosenquist and Rossi. So the vibe I'm basically getting is they're the ones to watch this year, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and also, if you like F1 and you want to pick a team for this sport, this might be the one to choose. Since you know, you might just feel a bit more at home having the familiar McLaren name and the papaya branding around you. And also, Zach Brown's on the pit wall quite a lot, so... Right, apologies to the other teams, but we're going to have to speed through you all now. Raul Letterman, coming off a rough year. They have Christian Lungard on board. He was in F2 a couple years ago, if you remember. Mayer Shank Racing, they have an alliance with Andretti. Many people think they're the same team, but they're not. They had a mediocre 2022, but they do have Simon Pagano, who, if you remember correctly, took out Lando Norris in an iRacing race in 2020. Why did you do that? Funny. Dale Klein Racing are very much underdogs. They have a small budget, but occasionally you can still find themselves fighting up there with a the big boy. Sort of like a Force India before Lawrence Stroll bought it and gave them loads of money. Ed Carpenter Racing has two full-time drivers. However, the owner, Ed Carpenter, does actually race himself each year on the ovals. Sounds like a legend. Junko's Hollinger Racing, that's definitely not how you say the name, are the newest team on the grid. They only ran one car last year, but are now expanding it to two, bringing in 2020 F2 vice champion Callum Ilock. And then finally, we have AJ Foyt Racing, the oldest team on the IndyCar grid. However, 
but just like Williams now on F1, they seem to be spending most of their time at the back of the grid. Oh, and there you have it. That's all the teams. If you're feeling overwhelmed, don't worry, I am too. But it's fine. I'm sure we'll become familiar with the drivers and teams we need to know as the season goes on. And we actually watch a few races. Oh, Lord, I've not even spoke about the races yet. Now, just like most race series on Earth, the drivers in IndyCar all aim to cross the line first when the checker flag waves. However, unlike F1 and some other sports, they do do things differently. For starters, the races begin with a rolling start with the cars two by two, NASCAR style. And with yellow flags, if one's thrown, it basically means safety car. As they do have to slow down, get behind the pace car and then restart when it's safe to do so. That's on ovals anyway. When it's on a road course or a street circuit, it's a little bit different. With one wave yellow just meaning, you know, slow down, there's an instant. And then double wave yellows meaning safety car. I don't know why they do it that way. Take it up with them, not me. <laughs> they also wave a white flag when the leader starts the final lap. And unlike F1, lads, the lapped cars don't have to let the leaders through. On ovals anyway. On road courses, I think they do. But on ovals, they can just sit in the way if they want to. Pit stops in IndyCar almost look like F1 in the 2000s. With refueling still being a thing. Since Americans don't really worry about health and safety like we do, which also probably explains their gun laws. But I mean, let's get off of that topic. A quick stop in IndyCar is about seven seconds. So if when you're watching it, it goes into, you know, double digits, that probably means someone's messed up. You can't park this, huh? Now, unlike F1, IndyCar doesn't have DRS, but they do have a system called push to pass, which is kind of like hers if you remember that from F1. But if not, it's basically like NOS in a video game. You push it, you go faster, it helps you overtake cars on track. Now, drivers are allowed to use push to pass for a certain amount of seconds per race. Usually it's about 200, but it can change from track to track. And they can only use it for up to 20 seconds at a time. However, once you use it, it's gone. It doesn't reset, you can't recover it, that's it. So they have to make sure that they don't blow their load too early. <laughs> Tracks limits wise, there are none. As long as you're not shortcutting the track or whatever, Indy cars can basically drive wherever they want on the circuit. Which, as you can imagine, can lead to some hair raising moments as they push trying to find as much extra lap time as they can, especially in quali. Now, again, I'm not going to properly go into all the intricate details of Indy car qualifying, but very, very, very briefly, lads. Here's what happens. Right, so all the cars are split into two groups. They go out for a session, do some laps. Then the fastest six from each group go out again. Then the fastest six from that group go out into one more session where they go around, do some more laps, and then the fastest in that session is on pole. The rest are then lined up in their fastest times behind them, and there you go. That's how it works. Don't ask me any more questions because I don't know the answer. <laughs> on ovals, though, it is a bit different, as instead of going out in groups, each car goes out on their own to do two laps. The grid is then formed based on your average speed on those two laps. So, you know, on these laps, they've got to get up to a high speed, be consistent, keep the speed going, be nice and smooth. And yeah, if they make a mistake, basically it's done out. Makes sense? Nice. Happy days. <laughs> We're getting there, lads. We're learning. I feel I could have a career in teaching if this whole YouTube thing fails. Now, tyres. There's two different kinds. Primary and alternate. In the race, they have to use both. The alternate is faster, but wears a bit quicker. And the primary is obviously a little bit slower, but lasts longer. On ovals, though, there's only one kind of tyre, and that's the slicks. There's no tread, obviously, so the tyre life sort of depends on, you know, the surface of the track and also how you drive. If it rains, they have wet tyres for road and street circuits. And gazebos for ovals. That's because they don't race in the wet on ovals, because it's dangerous, apparently. So, boys and girls, I think we're just about there. The final thing is, well, where to bloody watch it? Thankfully for us Brits, Sky Sports F1 have a lovely deal with the Americans, meaning that all the races, I think, are shown on there. As for the rest of the world, here's a lovely graphic that Cassie made showing all your options. I'm sure you'll notice one of them on there that you recognise. If you don't, then just give it a Google. I'm sure you'll find somewhere that's showing it. If not, I'm sure there's an illegal stream somewhere you can find. But yeah, that's IndyCar. Confusing, yes. But isn't every sport when you first start getting into it? Now, I can't promise by the end of this season I'll be a dedicated, diehard IndyCar fan. But I'm definitely going to give it a chance this year. I've said it over and over again before in the past that I want to try watching it. And this season, this is why I've made this video, is the one. I'm going to try and watch a few races, try and get into it at least a little bit. And hopefully you do as well. The first round of the season is this weekend, so definitely give it a go. And yeah, thanks again to Cassie for letting me use her information for this video. She really has done the hard work here. Be sure to follow her on Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video, why not watch another? Like where I tried to run the entire distance of a Grand Prix in a month. Or when I quiz Drive Survive fans on their knowledge of Formula One. Links to both those videos are on screen now. Thank you for watching, lads. Have a great day. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.